Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is AES and welcome to my YouTube channel. For the longest time, I believed that the best fast food burger came from five guys. The juiciness of the burger, the quality of the toppings, and the beef's girth had a distinguishable place that neither McDonald's nor Burger King could touch. As I watched more and more videos on YouTube, I constantly saw comparisons between Five Guys and In-N-Out Burger when it comes to the title of the best burger in the fast food industry. It took me a very long time to try it considering that In-N-Out is not available where I live. Thankfully, I visited California a few years ago and gave the place a try. My expectations were high considering that In-N-Out burgers were said to be just as good if not better than the iconic meal from Five Guys. Sadly, it let me down. Whether it was the sauce or the lackluster beef patty, I just did not feel like it touched Five Guys in the burger department. It wasn't bad, but it was disappointing. This feeling of not meeting a certain degree of expectation is the centerpiece of today's video. However, our goal now won't focus on burgers, rather it will be on video games that did not live up to my personal anticipation. A couple of pointers before we get started. First, I need to reiterate that the following games are not necessarily bad. Instead, there are titles that had a standard to fill by either yours truly, the developers themselves, or people who recommended them to me, but they ended up not being as good as folks claimed. Secondly, the picks will be ranked based on how disappointed I was by them. Lastly, and as always, this ranking is entirely subjective and if you have other games on your respective list, please let me know in the comments section and we will discuss them. Without further ado, let's rank my top 10 most disappointing games of all time. Number 10, Minecraft Story Mode. I've been a fan of Telltale ever since I first experienced the first season of The Walking Dead, which tells the story of Lee and Clementine. It is the set of these five episodes in a post-apocalyptic world that serves as my favorite gaming experience of all time. From that point onward, I tried to play every entry from Telltale, including The Amazing Wolf Among Us, the fantastic Batman series, and the Take It or Leave It Guardians of the Galaxy. Nevertheless, Minecraft Story Mode is by far the worst out of the bunch. The jokes land here and there, and I enjoyed the way in which the blocky visual design of Minecraft still managed to relay emotional moments, but there are two reasons as to why it is not nearly as good as the other games in Telltale's catalog. On one hand, the narrative lost a lot of steam after episode 3. In fact, it is episode 5 that almost has nothing to do with the general storyline. On the other hand, the plot as a whole was filled with cliches and predictable situations. Tell me if you ever encountered this scenario. A regular guy becomes a part of a prophecy. One day someone or something threatens the world. The regular guy, with the help of allies or mystical powers, saves the land. I'm sure that at some point, you have seen it in a movie, TV show, or video game. Minecraft story mode is far from my worst video game of all time, but I expected more from a company that gave me my favorite video game of all time. It also does not help this pick's chances that it is based on an IP that, in my opinion, is overrated. Number 9, Call of Duty 3. I told this story during the video where I ranked every title in the series from worst to best, but it is relevant here as well. My initial impressions of the PlayStation 3 came from Call of Duty 3. I visited my grandparents, plugged in the console that they bought for their grandkids, and placed myself in the shoes of a soldier during World War II. The graphics were extraordinary, the gunplay was a ton of fun, and I chuckled when I could use the controller to hit a German enemy in scripted scenes. While making the aforementioned video, I decided to replay Call of Duty 3, and my experience was vastly different from my first playthrough. The motion controls felt more gimmicky than mind-blowing. The multiplayer played favorites towards users of sniper rifles, and the story did not make much sense when compared to the introductory entry in the series and its sequel. Call of Duty 3 is a decent retelling of fictional events from World War II, but my adoration of the title several years ago resulted in not-so-stellar first-person shooter sessions on the PlayStation 3. Number 8, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. One of the main criticisms of current Dragon Ball Z titles is the story, which is wonderful at its core, but the majority of games that feature Goku and Vegeta ask the players to re-experience the same story over and over again. In 2015, the formula was flipped on its head with Dragon Ball Xenoverse, where you were able to create your own character and experience a similar tale, but with a major twist. Someone is messing with the timelines and you must stop them. 
It was refreshing and it included beautiful graphics and a fun combat system. When the sequel was announced for a 2016 release, I expected to do what sequels typically do, improve upon the first game. Well, in a similar fashion to another pick on this list, the second title in the series felt more like the base game plus downloadable content instead of an actual subsequent entry. The character models and animations are practically identical to the first universe and the multi-personnel events could have yielded much better rewards. I immensely enjoyed both Xenoverse 1 and 2, but I cannot help but think the following while playing the latter. So this is Xenoverse 1.5, right? Number 7, Necromunda Hired Gun. The most recent inclusion on this list, Necromunda Hired Gun had my curiosity from the very initial trailer. Nice presentation, disorganized action sequences in a good way, and a hint of a lore that reminded me a lot of John Wick aka one of the best film trilogies of all time. Naturally, I did not hesitate to turn on my laptop, access the PlayStation Store online, and pre-order it. Upon its release, my experience with the game had me question, why am I not playing Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, or Doom Eternal right now? The story did a poor job in engaging its audience, who may not be familiar with the Warhammer 40k lore. The gameplay was responsive, but generic at the same time. Outside of the lighting, the visuals could have given the assumption that I was playing a video game from the PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360. Despite the lack of advertisements, I was personally hyped for the title. Disappointingly, I felt more like one of the grunts that John Wick assassinated than the boogeyman killer himself. Number 6. Hitman By the time I played 2016's Hitman, I had nothing but positive comments about it. The spy espionage plot was cool and nicely accommodated people who never interacted with the series prior to the number 6 spot on this list. The flexibility with the gameplay is unlike anything you experience in a stealth game prior to the title's release date. The presentation was spot on, even though the physics of fallen enemies can be goofy at times. All of this praise may force you to scratch your head and wonder why it is a part of this video. It is quite simple. The first game in the modern trilogy may be complete as of the recording of this ranking, but it was very much incomplete at launch. You see, Hitman came out with a single map. Any additional maps were released periodically, similar to how episodes came out for Minecraft Story Mode. That decision behind the game's developers and publishers baffles me to this day. You also know that it was a bad idea when Hitman 2 and 3 did not follow suit with that business model. If you like Hitman or are you looking for a taste of true stealth-based gameplay, I highly recommend 2016's outing. That is, I would sing its praises in August of 2021. Five years ago, I'm not so sure. Number 5. God of War Nowadays, God of War is one of PlayStation's biggest franchises. The tale of a Spartan soldier who musters the strength to overpower Greek gods makes you feel the same way when the heroes of Dragon Ball Z attempted to damage Broly in the first movie, only for the villain to rush it off as if nothing happened. 2018's entry improves on the formula with the inclusion of a more personal plot and a cool relationship with his son, Atreus. Generally speaking, the God of War franchise is one of the best action-based IPs in gaming. It is with a heavy heart, then, that I must call out the very first title as disappointing. Yes, it is the introductory experience with Kratos, and the follow-up adventures improve on the standards that were set in 2005. Back then, though, I feel like the hero's battle against Ares was not amazing and certainly has not aged well as time has gone by. Dark lighting for the majority of the experience, lackluster variety with the combat, and a couple of sections that are unnecessarily tedious, prevented from being the holy grail of introductions to an action-heavy video game. I still enjoyed it and gave it an 8.8 .8 out of 10, but I don't think it is a PlayStation 2 system seller in the same vein as God of War 2. Number 4, Bioshock 2. Early in this video, we talked about Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, which I refer to as Xenoverse 1.5. I will ultimately do a major project about the Bioshock franchise, and my opinion may change around that time, but the same sense of deja vu with the original title also infects the first person horror based game. Bioshock 1 was great and included a tense, eerie atmosphere. Bioshock 2 improves in the gameplay department by allowing you to play as the Big Daddy but everything else has either stayed the same or worsened. The powers are similar, the visuals are practically unchanged, and the plot lacks the light bulb moments that solidifies the reason as to why Bioshock 1 is at many people's lists of top 10 video games of all time. 
It also doesn't help the sequel's case when it takes place in the same exact location. Say what you want about Bioshock Infinite, at least it changed the scenery, so it did not feel like Bioshock 1.581256. The first Bioshock forced me to go into Bioshock 2 with some expectations, and although it met and rarely exceeded some expectations, it did not live up to some of them, which led to its placement on this list. Number 3. Assassin's Creed Unity I will defend Assassin's Creed Unity as a good title in the series. Arno is a charismatic protagonist, the visuals hold up well to this day, and the opportunity to team up with other assassins to complete missions is simply chef's kiss. It is not the best Assassin's Creed game, but it is better than the original Assassin's Creed by a mile. Nonetheless, we all know the state of the number 3 spot on this list upon release. Unacceptable bugs, noticeable glitches, and a parkour system that can be frustrating led to its ultimate downfall in the eyes of many gamers. In fact, it is the abysmal reception of Unity that led to Syndicate receiving some pushback, even though it is a solid game as well. Assassin's Creed Unity has improved since 2014, but it is understandable that fans of the franchise felt let down by Arno's quest to become an assassin. Number 2, Life is Strange 2. The original Life is Strange is one of the best narratives I have ever experienced. It starts off as a typical melodramatic high school tale, but it quickly develops into something much more complex and emotional, accompanied by the incredible friendship between Max and Chloe. Every episode ended with a cliffhanger, with the exception of episode 5 of course, and the final decision was truly hard to make. Life is Strange 2 has a very strong start. A family tragedy leads Daniel and his big brother to travel across the United States, on their way to Mexico. Unfortunately, my interest in the title started to decline after episode 2 and did a complete nosedive during episode 3. The characters simply did not compare to the memorable cast of characters that was presented in the first Life is Strange and even in the Before the Storm standalone. There are other aspects that made me facepalm, ranging from the visuals that did not change much from the original game and a soundtrack that, while having some really strong selections, remained slightly worse than the stellar music choices in Max and Chloe's adventure. I really hope that Life is Strange True Colors will force the series to bounce back to its pure form. Life is Strange 1 is in my top 100 video games of all time. Life is Strange 2? Nowhere close. Number 1. Dead Space 3 Dead Space 1 and 2 are some of the best horror video games of all time. The former introduces us to Isaac Clarke, an engineer that ventures onto the Ishimura spacecraft and confronts an alien species known as Necromorphs. The latter ramps up everything from the original title, especially with the scares that are less focused on making you jump out of your seat and more so on built up tension. When Dead Space 3 was announced, you can predict that I was pretty excited to see how the story will continue. The news also arrived while adding cooperative gameplay and a crafting system that enabled you to make your own weapons. On paper, these concepts should work, however, they do not. Playing with another player takes away most of the scares and transforms Dead Space 3 into a third-person shooting game like Ghost Recon Future Soldier. The crafting system is restrictive, making the majority of foes bullet sponges unless you really explore the environment and upgrade your guns. The story itself was similar to Tomb Raider in Space, and the ending wrapped up with a cliffhanger that will most likely never be resolved. Dead Space 3 is more than competent, but it doesn't touch the amazing and memorable experience that the first two games in the trilogy provided, making it my most disappointing game of all time. Well folks, that's the end of the video, thank you very much for checking it out. Which video game disappointed you the most? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Till next time, have a great day or evening wherever you are, my name is AES, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.